Hi guys, ever had issues polishing piano black trim? You know how bad they are. Let's get some polishing done. Hi guys, Kelly Harris, Global Director of Training for Lake Country Manufacturing. Welcome to our starter series. This series, we're gonna show you your sort of more mundane, if you can call it a Focus RS, a mundane car, more of a normal car with soft paint, and we're gonna show you the swells. So we've got two areas left here that we haven't polished. We've got the front door, we've got the front door there with its swells, and then we've got the rear door. And there's actually worse swells down there. They're really bad on the lower part. I'm gonna move down the door, and I'll move the light up and down. You'll better see the two doors where they're damaged. Now we've polished the rest of the car. There's two little areas left that I want to show you. Plus, this will be very, very easy to capture. We've got some great footage there. You can see on the camera of how swirly the black pillars are. So what we're going to do, first of all, we're going to tackle the blue painted areas and I'm going to show you and run through the machine and what pad we're going to use and what compound. There's reasonably soft paint, so it's quite easy to polish. What you might be able to notice, I've already pre-taped the matte sticker. You don't want to polish anything that's matte black or even satin black, because it will go shiny. Matte stays matte, so we need to protect that from any over polishing or splatter. And of course, because of the matte rubbers here, we've masked them up as well. So let me get my equipment. What we got, I've gone for the HDO pad range here. And when I say pad, I mean foam pads, not microfiber. So for reference, here we have a microfiber. They call that a cutting pad. Correctly so, it's very aggressive cutting. You might not know, we sort of change levels of abrasion into cutting and polishing. And then of course you've got heavy polishing, medium polishing, fine polishing, and almost refining. Likewise, you can have heavy extreme cutting, light cutting. So we've got two sort of categories. We've got cutting. We have cutting and we have polishing. But that's cutting, that's heavy polishing, then we have a medium polishing and a very, very light polishing. So I know this would really be aggressive and it would fix those swirls very easy, but you're sacrificing clear coat. And we don't want to sacrifice clear coat because you're wearing down clear coat. You might run a, a potential of wearing through an edge prematurely. If four or five people in the life of this car kept using this pad as a heavy cut pad, when it's not necessary. Now, of course, I do know this has got reasonably soft paint. That's just experience. That tells me then it's been washed very little because it's a new car. It's low mileage and it's already got lots of swells. Generally, that means it's softer paint. If that was rock hard granite paint, some of the German models have granite paint or this ceramic clear of the old days, and it was the same age, same mileage, I'd have a lot less swells. So there's a little guide there and we can create a video in the future for you and actually help you see the, the differences in hard and soft paint. So I'm gonna go with a heavy polishing pad from the HGO range, not the heavy cutting pad. And I'm gonna go with the cut compound, not the polish. So what I've done here, I've gone for a cutting compound on a light, lighter cutting pad, a heavy polishing pad. So it's a 15 mil orbit machine. So it's a dual action machine, a DA machine. So it's doing oscillations, which is easier to control than a rotary for a newbie. Very popular machine is a 15 mil orbit. And there's many brands on the market now that make a 15 mil orbit machine. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna prime the pad up. I'm going with the free blobs. Now, you, you could just turn it on the car or you could rub it in, but you notice how it's not spreading very far. So what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna rub that in there, then I'm gonna put three more blobs. And initial, the initial pass over the car, or over the panel, is really and truthfully just almost gonna prime this pad up. And what happens with foam pads, they break in, they get softer. They, they become less firm. So before I start priming, and now I've rubbed that in, it's not gonna fall off. I'm gonna wipe my hand, so get the compound off. I'm gonna lay tape down there and create a join line. I'm gonna polish a section 
And then we can unmask it and show you what correction we've done. I'm gonna put the lead over my shoulder. Let's go. So what I've done there with the machine, and I'll demo again with that machine going so you can hear me. I've actually got my elbows resting on my legs. I've got a stall that pivots, makes it very easy. It's a very cheap stall that we bought with eBay. The car's on the floor, the vehicle's on the floor. So it's not lifted up in the air, so I'm doing it as a sort of how you would have to do it in your garage at home, out on your driveway, on the road. So what I'm doing, I'm literally resting the weight of the machine on my legs, or all I'm doing is rotating the stall side to side, making it really simple. I'm keeping a dead flat pad, contact patch, so it's flat on the surface, and all I'm doing, I'm moving side to side, and as I side to side, I'm just lowering my arm, and then I'm going up and down. Just up and down, side to side. And I'm just doing overlapping zigzag motions, up and down, side to side. So now what I'm gonna do, I can see, I can actually see that the light swells are gone, and there's a deeper one still there. And I can actually see that through the compound. See a line there? So I can see there's an improvement, but it wants one more pass. So I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to put some more compound on. What I'll try and do is try and put many blobs where... It's my preferred way. If, got, if you have a bottle that has a lovely little dispenser on it, you can do that. I'm just sort of building up the compound all over the pad so it's more uniform. I'm going to turn the speed down. I don't need to rub it in. I'm going to just turn the speed down because it's a flat panel and it's, it'll rub itself in it. Be bed in. So I can now see the defects are gone, and I can actually see through the residue of the compounds. What's happening there? As you're polishing, the compounds wearing down. It's called diminishing. What happens is the, the little cubes or little cutting agents get smaller and smaller and smaller. So the liquid actually becomes clearer and clearer. It becomes see-through. So as you're polishing, what I've actually done there is two things. I did at number two, three on the speed, so about half speed. And as it started to go clearer, I turn the speed down to get a bit best, better refinement. But let's see if we can capture it and we're bringing the camera in close. You can actually see the swells in the light and in where the pattern is of the polishing, it hasn't actually got any swells. You can actually see through the compound. And as you come across, you'll see the swells again. And where, where it's all swirly, obviously I'm gonna wipe off that residue to show you and prove it. So I'm gonna grab a cloth. Let's wipe it off carefully. Nice folded clean towel. Nice flat hand, hardly any pressure. Because remember, this is actually a cutting agent still and it could slightly mark the paint. So I'm not pushing hard, I'm just wiping gently. I'm gonna turn the cloth. So hopefully this is gonna be the perfect solution. I'm sure it is. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna untape it. Let's untape the tape now. There'll be a little white compound line. I'm gonna remove that. Do you know what? I'm gonna leave that white line because that gives you a perfect line to see the sort of before and after. And hopefully you can see there and capture it there. I can move the light along and you can... What we got is the before and after as you go along the down the door. It gives you a great idea and shows you what that couple of passes did Quite a simple flat pad, nothing clever, just nice and flat. I took my time, there was no heat generated. It was um, just a gentle process, one step process. Yep, I'm, I'm really, really liking that. That was a very, very easy process. So let me recap. You can now see why I suggested that this would probably be too aggressive. It would still achieve exactly the same results as that done, and actually probably in one pass, not two passes. But you're sacrificing some clear coat, and this would actually make the paint dull. So what this would do, it micro mark, it puts lots and lots of tiny polishing marks because it's heavy cut. So then you have to come along with a finishing pad and do a two stage. 
So ultimately, in time, they're very similar because I've done two passes here with that pad and one compound, the blue HDO. Whereas if I use this, I then have to then finish with something like this. So I'd have to do one pass and one pass. But ultimately, using the HDO microfiber on this soft paint would achieve the results you want, but you are taking a bit more clear coat off than necessary. What would you prefer? Would you prefer to do one stage and then step down to a finishing? So it's a two stage, but two passes, or just stick with one pad, one compound, two passes. I've achieved the results. Don't forget to comment down below. So what we're gonna do now is polish both pillars. We've been polishing the car and we found that Lake Country Manufacturing's blue HDO heavy, cut, heavy polishing pad was the perfect combination with the Obert compound. So what I'm gonna do, still using HDO pads, I've gone down to the three inch HDO pad and we're going to a, a small battery operated machine with a 12 mil orbit. So what we're gonna to have to do with this, we're gonna to have to mask up an area. So what I'm going to do is mask half of it. I'm gonna polish half to help show you the process. Now, what we did do with the, the vehicle color being a light blue, we've managed to cut in one stage, meaning we've used just one pad, one compound, one machine, and cut and refined all in one stage. Piano black trims will look much better, but to get the ultimate gloss, we need to do a two step. But first of all, let's start with the one step. So what we're gonna do is uh, Turn the machine on. I would recommend turn the machine on, turn the speed down first before you put the compound. So I've actually turned the speed right down. Different machines have, this has got a digital controller. It might have a, an analog sort of dial. I'm gonna prime the pad up again, like I always do with any new pad, small amount of compound. Put that down in the trolley. They're actually Poker Premium trolleys. They're great trolleys, perfectly made and designed for this purpose and application of being able to plonk machines down, hold your compound. So if you see, I've actually rubbed that compound in and I'm gonna actually rub some more in to try and prime the pad up. And we want, it would be, makes sense to get all the surface with compound. Otherwise we've just got, it's a plain foam, not doing anything. I don't rub it in every single time once it's primed we can actually then go and just put more compound on and I'll show you that in a minute. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna do some polishing. And remember I said I put it at number one speed, low speed to start it off. I'm gonna stop there. Did you notice I put my hand here for the battery so it didn't knock as I'm aware of it? Now, if I go and sit on a stall, which I'm going to do, it's going to make the job a lot easier. So just sit on a stall, lift the stall up. Now it's more comfortable, and I can move this around to make sure the battery doesn't knock the car. You'll, you'll notice that obviously the rubbers are all masked up, because I don't want to be polishing a rubber, it'd be silly. You, you always want to mask up them delicate areas. I'm just going to check. I can still see swells through the compound. So I'm going to carry on. I'm going to have to put some more compound in a minute. I'm going to wear a braid down this compound. So I'm going to check again with the light, the inspection light. I can see deeper marks in there, but the change is, is vast. So I'm going to do two, two passes. So repeat the process again, but because the compound or the pad's now primed, I'm not gonna put on quite as much. Now, when you've got gaps where that compound's gonna fill up, on a flat big panel, it prime easy. I'm actually gonna rub this in again so it doesn't get pushed into them grooves. So I'm gonna try and spread this around a little bit. Did you notice I'm using both hands to turn it one way and that way to keep the battery out? I actually do it with a larger machine as well. Do you do that? 
comment down below. Are you lefty, righty? I, I use both. Um, I actually got staff that are right-handed but polished left-handed, which is really weird. So what's your preferred method? What's your preferred style? Is there a preferred machine you like? So this is the second pass or second set, some call it. I'm gonna move the trolley closer so I can put this machine in now. What I'm gonna do is pick a light up. I'm gonna look through the compound again, the residue. It's quite smeary, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get my cloth, wipe it down, carefully folding the cloth so there's no sharp, wrinkled up edges. I'm gonna very carefully wipe it. I'm not trying to push all the compound off in one go, flip the cloth. I'm just going to check the middle, not where the tape edge is, just because I want to see the results. So, yep. So what we've got, it's now got rid of swells. It's got micro marring. And I can show you the micro marring in a moment. And this will help me show you why we, I would now recommend a extra step, a refining step. So let me get the light. And you can see there's actually, that's polishing marring, that's not swells. So what we got is this cross-hatched overlapping cutting action that now needs refining. I could have just carried on working this, this polisher and compound and just turn the speed down and let it diminish down, but it's never gonna get the perfect clarity. It never will, it's impossible. So what I'm gonna do this time, I'm actually gonna tape half of that up There. I'm going to do a demonstration to help you guys of the compound that's just created the damage. I'm going to go back over this bottom half and turn the speed down and carry on working the compound. So what I've tried to do there is give this combination every opportunity, every chance to give me the best possible finish from a one step process. Now I needed the cut to be aggressive enough to actually do the cutting action. But on, it's notorious, piano black trims are notorious for having very, very difficult to correct. But um, a lot of people, especially people that are new to this sort of game or, or you're doing it yourself at home, would probably struggle. Now, this is, um, again, we're coming with a camera. So we've got the original starting up the top. This is what the blue HGO three inch pad with Obert one step compounded on a 12 inch orbit machine. And that there is just the improvement that I achieved by carrying on polishing. So this part here was already polished and this is polished with the same part, the same process. All I've done, I've been slightly more gentle. I've turned the speed down and I've let, allowed the compound to diminish, which has gave us a better clarity. So you can see that there's actually a bit of knowledge is needed for Understanding what's going on with compounds. Um, compounds are diminishing. Think of them as sugar cubes getting smaller and smaller and smaller as you work them. They don't dissolve away, they're braided down. So that's, they're getting smaller and smaller and they're becoming more re refined. So what actually happens is, if you stop too early on your polishing process, you actually lose, we call it micro marring or machine marring. It's millions and millions of little scratches from the cutting process where you've been either too aggressive with your selection of compound and pad, or you've just not worked it long enough. Well, I'm gonna re-go back over this area, just briefly. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wipe it down again. I'll take the tape off. Carefully wipe the area. We get the light again. So we go up to the swirly area, and that's the, the first cutting stage. You've got this micro marring that's been induced from the cutting action. So, what I'm going to do now, we're going to step into the step, second step, the second phase. So, it's going to be as simple as we're going to swap out the blue polishing pad for the finishing light cutting pad, the black, the black pad. And I'm going to go to Step two, 
cutting polish or a light cutting polish or refining polish but it's a lot more gentle compound if I could get it come out the bottle same principle I'm going to prime up the pad I'm going to rub that compound in and what I'll do I will mask up half of what I've just polished to give you a, a great demonstration of the two stages from before to finished. And as usual, I'm going to put another lot of compounds, so it's two passes. It's primed up the pad. I'm going to put a few more blobs on there. So I'm now going to wipe off the fine polish. This cloth earlier was used to remove the cutting compound, the step one. So I don't want to use that same cloth and rub that surface now. So I'm going to get a fresh cloth. Take the tape off. Discard the tape. And we're going to carefully wipe that area down. I'm flipping the cloth. I'm going to inspect it with a light. So we've got some sticky marks from the masking tape. They will come off of alcohol. But, um, yep, there's a few bits of fluff and lint from the, the cloth. But what I'm going to do, we'll bring the camera in, and then we'll show you again. We've got the swirls as the vehicle come in. There's the first stage, the cutting stage, with the blue HDO pad. And then we've gone from the blue pad to the finishing pad with the black HDO pad. And we've used Oberk Step 2 compound there and Oberk Step 1 compound there. But as you can see, you can see why we do two stages of refinement on Piano Black. Now, imagine, not imagine, you, you might know this, but if you've never polished jet black cars, Piano Black cars, you have to spend a lot long, probably have is the wrong word, to get that finish, you would spend a lot longer. What do you do? Comment down below. Do you do more than you should for the time scale or the budget? Do you literally go above and beyond? Would you leave it micromard? Would you leave it with a slight gloss? Or do you do the two stages? The color of the car here, you can get away with one stage. The black, in my opinion, you can't get away with one stage. So essentially, if we had a black version of this car, we'd have to polish it for a lot longer than a blue car. And we do polish it longer. Do you quote more? Do you quote less? Do you allocate extra time? Or was you even aware of the differences in the colour? Now, the colour doesn't affect the hardness, it's just your eyes can see more swells in a dark colour car than they can, or should I call it paint? A dark colour paint than a light colour paint. As always, I'm Kelly Harris, the Director of Global Training for Lake Country Manufacturing. Hopefully it's been really helpful and thank you for watching, stay tuned, goodbye.